Oh, I'm so clumsy. Well, hello there. What's your name? God damn, girl, that thing is massive. Let me get that. Welcome back. This is the car. This is the track. And this is what happens when two of these cars get stacked on top of each other. Incredible image of Jules Goudon posed on the toit of Geoffrey Denard. We are starting this race in P7 as car number nine with a 219.998, just about my birth year uh, right there. The guy at the front is a whole second ahead of us, so the chances of winning are pretty slim. Joey is right ahead of us, by the way. You can see that beautiful cold racing livery, same as mine. And uh, car number 20 is looking to go around the outside. 13 sends it up the middle, makes us uh, three wide momentarily. I have the inside, so I'm able to scoop around a lot quicker than them and uh, leave them in the dust, kind of. I am soaking up slipstream from Joey, but I have this massive train queued up behind me, just trying to uh, not pay attention to that. Joey is going to completely cut the track, just completely cut Radion, and sadly, that is going to put him, uh, it's gonna hit him with a pretty hard penalty. The penalty is like, it's like four seconds. These two guys up here, same thing, so they're slowing down. Everybody's flying past them. I'm kind of leading that charge past them. Fortunately, car number 20 is sending it up the inside of 13, so that's going to slow both of them down at a crucial point in the track. It'll give me the racing line all the way through here and into the next corner, which is pretty important. The uh, three at the front are already starting to pull away, but from those three free positions we gained at the beginning, we're actually currently riding in P4, which I am literally over the moon about. The cars ahead in the last couple of races, those two guys ahead, have been fighting pretty heavily, so I feel like there's some type of beef completely whiff on that apex, missing it, uh, but luckily there's still enough space behind that I'm not really under any attack. 20 taking a defensive line behind me, 13 uh, taking the outside line. He's going to tuck in behind car number 20, possibly look for an undercut, but it looks like 20 is going to cut that off. Somebody else joining the fray, car number 7 right behind him, and he is going to look to make a move up the inside of number 13. You can hold it around the outside on this corner, and 13 does well to do that. This is allowing 12 to get into the fight. 7 goes very wide, opening up the inside, which turns into the outside for the next corner for car number 12, who is going to remain there around corner 14, around the outside, giving space, a little bit of net code contact, but 7 is kind of forced to back out there. He doesn't have enough room to get the power down as much as he would probably like, so he does uh, consolidate by keeping that position, but backing out. All of that fighting has opened up this absolutely massive gap behind me, uh, which I am going to take advantage of by running off the track and not really giving a flying fuck about it. Into the chicane, P2 and P3 up ahead are pretty close to each other. P3 making a beautiful move as P2 goes wide or goes deep on the exit of that chicane and he swoops up the inside. As we start lap two, I am in a pretty good position. P3 is, I believe, to be a faster driver than the guy currently in P2, so I'm expecting them to fight. Even though I drop off a little bit up Eau Rouge, they're going to be under some heavy fire of each other. Car number five getting a good run. Uh, P2 is staying on the inside to defend this one, and then he actually moves out at the last second. Five doesn't have time to react to that, so he stays behind him, and we continue to follow. They are on each other's asses all of the way through this little section at the end of the Kimmel Strait, which is beautiful. It's going to allow us to uh, catch up and catch up. Coming into the downhill right-hander, he takes a semi-defensive line, pulling to the outside at the last second, P2 that is, and he goes very deep. P3 looks to snip up the inside, car number five, and he's uh, just about drives him off the track. Somehow, everybody stays on, on the track there. That's actually car number four ahead of us, so P5 made a beautiful move around him. Sorry for that Discord sound. It just recorded that. I, nobody, nobody joined your Discord server just now. I accidentally recorded that audio when I was recording the video. Sorry. Uh, we are now putting pressure onto P4, hoping that we can follow through as when somebody begins to fall back, like I've said before, they uh, get vulnerable and they are open to another position. We just about look up the inside there. Honestly, had we tucked to the inside before that braking zone, we might have been able to outbreak him there. Not going to happen. We're going to follow him through into corner 14 and 15. Very important corners. Keep the speed as high as you possibly can because it kind of leads on to this parabolica situation, and I failed to do that. Car ahead does that a bit better than me, giving himself probably an extra tenth there, which is absolutely crucial as this is a parabolica, not quite a straight, so the slipstream doesn't benefit you totally because you kind of have to back out anyway to uh, make sure that you and the car ahead of you make the corners. So you can hear me lifting there. Uh, I'm not going to try anything. I had already made up my mind that I wasn't going for a move into the chicane. Going to give that one to him, following behind him in P. Uh, four currently and um, this would kind of be the rhythm of the race for a bit as we come out of the chicane 
we are probably half of a second behind him he's half of a second behind the car ahead of him lap three <laughs> taking a look behind and joey who uh, had that slowdown earlier fighting his way through the pack makes a beautiful move around the outside into the chicane around car number three actually very fast driver but as he gets onto the exit a little bit too much throttle he's gonna throw it to the right throw it too far to the left and his car slides to the right collecting car number three there and putting him down a few more positions that's gonna be the last we see of joey for um i think the entirety of this race up O Rouge and Radion for the third time and pay attention to this gap ahead I'd say seven tenths between myself and the car ahead perhaps a second and then the same up to the car in front of him fast forward three laps and the situation has really not changed at all we were all running say mid 20s and I think for the car in P2 that was tire saving and he also had no slipstream and was able to do that by the end of the lap you can see just how far he begins to pull away as P2 starts to push I think about this time and he's making that push for P1 while that is happening I am beginning to make somewhat of a push uh it was I was pushing but I think it might have been more of the car ahead of me who was beginning to slow down whether that was his tires falling off or his um competitive stamina running out we began to find ourselves pulling closer and closer to him especially on the straight as he no longer has the slipstream of the car ahead and you can see just how much time we're going to make up by the end of the Kimmel straight I'd say we probably made up three tenths there maybe four tenths and then through the section at the end of the straight one of my favorite sectors in the world and uh, we're not going to lose any time to him if anything we gain time or at least we remain the same which is going to gain us time by virtue of having his slipstream for all of these very small areas uh, these very small small straights which do they do make a difference it makes it makes a big difference you just have to be ready to adapt your braking to compensate for the fact that you are carrying more speed in than you normally would and uh, I've been driving behind a lot of cars this week so I'm getting pretty good at measuring that this corner I do have problems on I run slightly wide still catch the oversteer at a perfect time giving me a really good angle but uh, I definitely could be braking slightly earlier when in the slip of somebody there heading into I think this is turn 12 great run by us we're gonna put ourselves right on his tail he goes slightly deep into there uh slightly early i believe he turned in into that corner and this is really important for us we don't take as wide of an entry as we possibly could have he doesn't either but he really wasn't ever i think his line uh he had just practiced a more narrow line than me and he was much better at it you can see him actually pulling probably a tenth or uh maybe two tenths there on the exit, which uh, was unfortunate for me. It was gonna keep him safe into the chicane on this occasion. Still running mid twenties, but this lap, as we are kind of beginning to get slowed down by this guy would kind of be the beginning of our pace falling down out of the chicane. And we made up some good time right on his tail, uh, just about running a 21 flat on that, uh, that lap. This is lap eight, so next lap around turn one he goes very deep on the exit which means that we are probably going to have a better exit than him he did make up slight time on entry or not on entry on mid corner there but is it going to be worth it probably not however while i probably could have gone for a move here as i soak up the slipstream he takes a defensive line and i realize i don't want him to take a defensive line i lift i back off a little bit i want and i move to the racing line to let him know that i want to work with him at least on this specific corner at the end of the straight because you lose so much time going side by side there or even taking a defensive line and car number eight has been fighting his way through the pack i believe this is one of the guys who we passed uh on that first straight who cut the corner so he's been fighting his way back i know he's fast and i am slightly concerned about that i want to get around this guy but i i need to do it somewhere where i can get a clean pass without going side by side for four three or four corners which is very common on spa i want to get it one corner done with and then i can run away and hopefully um have him fight with the car behind and ho help me open a gap car number four ahead not getting a great run totally missing the second apex we have a slightly better exit of course we are not close enough to really go for anything there and by this is uh the kimball straight of the next lap and we've kind of remained behind him into the braking zone and we're going to be pretty close i think this is as close as we actually have ever been since probably lap two or lap three and at this point, I mean, the whole race had basically just been putting in very consistent laps, making sure that we did not lose his slipstream and making sure we didn't give the slipstream to the car behind, getting right up on his tail, showing kind of uh, taking up his entire rear view was my goal there. I want him to feel like I am going to go for a move, even if I'm not necessarily. Drives very wide, definitely an off track for him there on that corner, heading into Puan. And this is a corner I'm super confident in. As we head into it, he goes very, very quickly, which is going to send him really deep. Our line is spot on, but before we go any further, 
Remember to click the like and subscribe and the bell button only if I can make the octopus in the bucket. How to make the octopus in the bucket? The bucket is gonna be on this shoe rack right here and I'm gonna be in my sim. Come on, baby. It's like directly behind me to the left. That one was low-key pathetic. I should have made that one. Okay, back to the race. So he gets a really bad run. We have a much better run than him. Moving to the inside, which is the outside for this next corner. It's totally possible to send a move around the outside. We are slightly behind him, but we're pushing our car ahead, meeting the apex of this next corner. And as we get on the power, we have a very small oversteer moment. Have to back off of the power, and that is going to give him complete track control and track position ahead of me. So that uh, did not work out in my favor. And I know he's really good at this corner, so I feel like I'm probably going to lose a bit of time here sure enough I am he's definitely keeping his throttle pinned while I am lifting slightly and that is something that I am unwavering on I'm not gonna lift right there uh, I've, I've spun out there too many times really good run on him here but it's just kind of dumb to try and send it too wide here especially with car number eight behind us that would lose us so much time onto this straight and potentially put him right onto our tail into the chicane and uh, we're just gonna follow him through here not looking to make anything happen we do want to get as good of a run out of here as we can to possibly put a move on not into the first corner but into uh the onto the Kimmel straight and the gap behind is still i mean it's pretty big this is the penultimate lap so there still is potential for myself and car number four to make a mistake big enough to allow him to catch up really what matters is if he gets in the slipstream on the straight on this lap we both get around there pretty nicely though and i don't think he's going to have any um meaningful slipstream so battle for p3 is what's happening here trying to get this one from uh car number four up ahead of me he's dropped off significantly from the car ahead of him i'm feeling really confident and i know that i have to go for this now as we approach the end of the kimmel straight i have very slight track position ahead of him breaking as late as i can just before that curb comes to you and we actually still end up sending it too deep i have to shift down to second late he goes wide to avoid me and catches a slight bit of oversteer we're able to allow space on the inside I'd get a very good run out and before we reach the next corner we just barely clear him moving over to the inside to take a defensive line uh, just late enough so that he can't adjust around the outside which should very safely give us this corner we hold a tight line all of the way through there car number eight is making up time to us and uh, should this fight continue he will probably be right on our tail very important that we nail Puhan uh, he will be receiving slipstream all of the way until the corner after Puhan so I need to have some sort of separation here hopefully he takes a worse line than me i take probably i mean you could argue that that was too narrow of a line however it doesn't look like he had that great of a run either so he is still going to be about two or three tenths behind us moving into the next corner and we take that flawlessly i absolutely love this this uh this whole sector all of the way to the end however this corner coming up is the one where i believe he has an advantage we managed to pull a very slight advantage out of those corners and fortunately he misses the apex there turning in a little bit too late and entering uh even more narrow than i would say he normally does which is going to give us about four tenths maybe three to four tenths between the two of us which should be enough to hold him off he perhaps could look at a move into the chicane it's really about if i keep the power pinned here which i actually lift slightly uh to make that corner which isn't optimal but it's going to be enough to hold him off in this occasion he was not quite close enough we need to nail this corner very easy to lose it on the exit of the chicane i've done it so many times putting the power down in first gear and you always kind of risk spinning there final lap and we do hold p3 with the floodgates behind us uh, i'd say about half of a second to p4 behind us car number four in p4 and once again i would say he probably sends it a little bit too deep on the exit they are not getting it quite enough angle and uh, that does hurt your run out the straighter you can get your car quicker the better because once you get that power down it's going to carry all of the way through to the end of the kimmel straight he does of course have the slipstream so that's going to help him out a lot but missing out on that initial burst of power could still work out to my benefit and could honestly be the deciding factor as he's going to be soaking up the slipstream but you can see that he's all i mean there's still probably maybe a whole tenth between us as we reach the braking zone entering to the s's at the end of the kimmel straight he's gonna have to settle behind us and um we are basically just taking our line through here hoping that we can keep this exact gap as with this type of gap there's really no type of move he can make he almost looks up the inside there i think he was just trying to get into my head but obviously uh i, I know nobody's going to send it from that far back at least not on purpose and getting the power down nicely out of that corner that's going to create a good amount of separation for us he turns in slightly early there which is going to hurt his exit sends him a bit deep on his exit puan once again into fourth gear kind of find that apex once the car starts to slide you get on the throttle you don't 
actually want to hit that first curb. You want to get close to that second one, but you don't really want to hit that one either as they'll kind of throw you out to the right and that is a left hander so uh you want to continue to turn left there we actually got a decent amount of separation through there as well you can see it's grown maybe a tenth or two he misses that apex as well that curve can definitely help pull you around and get angled entering again super narrow on this occasion i think it's going to hurt him more than it helps him this next corner is where i believe he has an advantage and i mean it doesn't really matter how good his run is through there. It's really going to matter how he behaves into the chicane as he would have to make an absolute monster of a dive and I am expecting him not to do that. So I'm kind of just relaxing, taking my line and kind of partying in my head in knowing that I'm about to cross the line in P3, baby. As car number nine, a better result than I was honestly really hoping for. Our pace was consistent. Our, um, I mean, we kept it on track. I think we... Uh, we earned that one. Honestly, I believe that that was an earned one, regardless of the fact that we got two positions for free at, the, well, three positions for free at the beginning of the race. And here are the results. So we finished that one in P3, gaining a shit ton, like a shit ton of safety rating, because uh, we crossed a whole number and some good I rating as well. Our fastest lap has uh, begun to come down. Our pace was honestly around 220s, like mid 220s, which I'm pretty happy with that. If you guys enjoyed this video, please remember to check out my channel and some of the other videos there. I am sure that you guys will find those enjoyable as well. And thank you so much.